So, we looked at the uh, uh, reinforced approach right uh, due to Williams and uh, as I was saying that uh, uh, basically uh, you look at uh, uh, what is called the uh, characteristic eligibility which is uh, the derivative of the lawn of the probability according to theta and then uh, you could potentially have a reinforcement baseline that does not depend on AT. We will see why that is the case uh, in a bit right. So, before we move on and continue with this development, I thought I will show a few examples to you as to how this kind of approach converts to update rules and how it is uh, you know more like a class of rules that can be looked at as policy gradient approaches. So, we will look at a simple case first right. So, we will consider the case of a binary bandit problem that means that there are only two actions right. You have either action 1 or action 0 right. So, we call it as 0 or 1 right. Now, I am going to have a single parameter theta obviously right. So, with some probability theta I will select action 1 and with probability 1 minus theta I am going to select action 0. So, that is the probability of uh, uh, the action given uh, the, the, the setting for theta right. So, now looking at this uh, derivative right dou ln pi by dou theta is uh, for uh, theta uh, for a equal to 1 it is going to be dou ln theta by dou theta right for a equal the case of a equal to 1 this will be dou ln theta by dou theta that is equal to 1 by theta. For a equal to 0 it is dou ln 1 minus theta by dou theta that is equal to what 1 by 1 minus theta into minus theta right. So, this will be minus theta by 1 minus theta when a equal to 0 and when a equal to 1 it is 1 by theta right. And one way of combining these two expressions is to write something like this. So, when you put a equal to 1 here, so I will get 1 minus theta. So, that will get cancelled it will leave me with 1 by theta and when a equal to 0 right I will put a 0 here. So, theta and theta uh, oh sorry not minus theta uh, is minus 1. So, the derivative of uh, uh, 1 minus theta is minus 1 right. So, I put uh, a equal to 0 here. So, the theta and theta will get cancelled I will get minus 1 by uh, 1 minus theta. So, basically this instead of saying that there are two conditions for the derivative uh, we just kind of be very clever and make it into a single condition. Now, remember that we have a bunch of things that we can still uh, decide on right. So, we need what should be the baseline and what should be alpha and so I will set the baseline to be 0 and I will set alpha to be some other constant rho right this is another step size rho into theta and 1 minus theta right. So, this is alpha alpha is equal to rho into theta into 1 minus theta. So, this is not dependent on r right as long as alpha is not dependent on r it is fine even though it is depends on theta it is ok it is as long as it does not depend on r it is fine. So, now I plug everything in right I put this into the expression that we have earlier right. So, what is the expression? Uh, so, alpha into r t minus beta t into dou ln pi by dou theta right. So, that I uh, will put that there I will basically end up with getting a minus theta right. So, rho into r into a minus theta. So, if you think about what happens here if I took action 1 right and I got a positive reward. I am just trying to deconstruct what happens. If I took action 1, a is 1 and r is greater than 0, then my theta will increase right. So, it is uh, it will be 1 minus theta right. So, so this the theta is a probability directly right. So, it is between 0 and 1 right. So, this will be 1 minus theta into r. So, r is greater than 0. So, and a is 1. So, this will be 1 minus theta. So, this will be a positive quantity right. Now, if a is 0 right and r is greater than 0 that means I took action 0 and I got a positive reward. So, what should I do to theta? I should decrease it right. So, that 1 minus theta goes higher. So, that is exactly what will happen. If a is 0 then this will be minus theta and remember theta is between 0 and 1 because it is a probability and r is positive. So, this will be r, r into minus theta. So, it will decrease the theta. Right? So, this basically is the uh, roughly the idea right. So, if I get a positive reward whenever I take the action right I increase the probability of the action. If I get a negative reward whenever I take an action I will decrease the probability of the action right. Is that clear? So, if I when I take the action I get a positive reward in this case 
theta will increase in this case theta will decrease that is the right acting I want. Likewise if r is less than 0 then theta will decrease if the action is 1 because this quantity will be positive r will be negative and if r is uh, 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 less than 0 and action is 0 then theta will actually increase right because this will be negative this will be negative so the overall change will be positive. So what happens when r equal to 0? This whole expression will go to 0 right this will go to 0 that will be no change right. So whenever I get a positive or a negative reward I will do something to it uh, 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 to the reward but if I do not get any reward I, there will be no change right. So this kind of goes back to the uh, 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 setting where we have a binary banded problem with binary rewards right. So where the rewards were either 0 or 1 right. So with some probability rho I will give you a reward of 1 with some probability 1 minus rho I will give you a reward right of 0. The, we talk about bandits with, by, with uh, uh, rewards coming from a Gaussian distribution this could be bandits with rewards coming from a binomial distribution right binomial reward bandits. So in this case what happens is that with probability rho I get a, a reward of 1 with probability 1 minus rho I get a reward of 0 right. So this is not the same rho as this I, uh, I just used rho here it is not the same rho as this right. So now what happens is that uh, if I get a reward of 1 then it is a good thing if I get a reward of 0 then it is a bad thing because that is the lowest reward right. So if the this kind of an update rule what will happen is whenever I get a penalty which is a 0 I will not change anything uh, in my bandits but whenever I get a reward I will increase the probability of taking that hand. So that is why it is used to be called reward and inaction right whenever something uh, penalty comes I, I do not do anything when reward comes I react to it right. So obviously the, the converse of this is L, R, P and things like this so there is a whole class of bandit problems right that, uh, uh, that uh, work on this principle right they do not really uh, 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 estimate values or anything just keep probabilities directly and whenever there is a positive reward uh, you increase the probability whenever there is no reward uh, you leave the probability as it is or you decrease the probability and so on so forth. So this, uh, this kind of a reinforced version of it is a generalization where if you get a positive reward you increase, if you get a negative reward you decrease and if you get a 0 reward you just keep it as it is okay. So that is one way of doing it right remember I was telling you this we could do this in a multinomial fashion and the multinomial when you bring it down to 2 actions it becomes the binomial like we did here right. So this uh, theta and 1 minus theta is essentially a binomial uh, uh, representation for the policy right there are 2 things here this is a binomial representation for the reward which we are not using in this example I am just telling you that it exists and this is a binomial representation for the policy right which is the multinomial case remember I was talking to you about 3 cases one where you could use so you could use uh, a multinomial for doing this so with 2 actions and it becomes a binomial that is the example that we looked at the other one is to do softmax that I will come, come to in a bit and the last one is to do continuous actions which we will also see uh, today. So just looking at these 3 examples to see what happens and of course the neural network part is what we are going to see for the rest of the lecture these simple examples are something that we will do just now right. So this is for the uh, uh, binomial case let us look at the multinomial uh, so let us look at the uh, softmax case right. So the in the softmax case what I am going to do is that I am going to assume that for every action ai right that is a parameter theta right so for every action ai that is a parameter theta. So pi of uh, uh, ai right uh, given the parameters theta is equal to e power theta i divided by summation e power theta j over all j okay. So that is basically uh, how my probability is going to be right this is the softmax thing and uh, for every action a I have a theta this is basically a vector right. right. So all, 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 all actions m right so I have theta 1 to theta m as my vector okay. So uh, first thing uh, I am going to assume that uh, my baseline right is going to be given by uh, the average of the observed rewards right. <coughs> so this goes back to a specific algorithm called reinforcement comparison where people use so some, all, some of these are available in the textbook even though I did not go over these in uh, detail uh, these uh, baseline algorithms are available in the textbook right. So the reinforcement comparison idea so you maintain an average of all the rewards you have gotten so far and if you get a reward higher than the average then you increase the probability of the action if you get a reward lower than the average you decrease the probability of the action and so we will basically show how that happens here right. 
So, this is uh, this is the stochastic averaging case right. So, where beta if it is 1 by t plus 1 uh, 1 by t right uh, then uh, this is the true average and if beta is a constant then it is kind of a moving uh, you know recency weighted average and all that we have seen that in the uh, original uh, 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 stochastic averaging estimate right we have seen this multiple times. So, that is basically uh, the baseline right. <coughs> Now, uh, we I am going to make the claim that if the action you took at time t, right, uh, if the action at time t if a t is equal to a i, then this is the parameter change you do for delta i. So, how did we come about this? Uh, we will see in a bit. So, this r bar is basically your b t, right. So, b t I have said is r bar. So, let us look at the uh, 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 the policy and this is the characteristic eligibility right and then uh, uh, so do ln pi by do theta i. So, this is do theta i into ln substituting this expression here and of course, uh, thanks to the fact that uh, um, I have ln right I can write it as ln e power theta i minus ln the denominator ln e power theta i is essentially right logarithm uh, of e is this theta i. So, that is basically theta i minus ln of the summation right. Now, this can be written as uh, derivative of this which is 1 and the derivative of the ln of the summation which is 1 by the function. So, the summation itself will come and then the derivative of because I am looking at theta i right. So, only e power theta i which is basically e power theta i. So, that is basically how this will come out right. So, this this is 1 this is that. So, that is basically 1 minus pi theta a i. So, that is what we started here right. So, yeah this is this the notation is basically pi of a i. I apologize for that. Uh, this is for the purposes of this slide let us take it like that. So, this is true whenever action a i is taken at state i right. What if action a i is not taken in state i right. So, uh, uh, for the other actions right. So, let us say um, before I go there right let us let us look at this right. So, this is this is the char characteristic eligibility dou ln pi and then I basically plug that in here. So, this I plug it in here. So, I get that times r minus r bar that that is the b t times alpha. So, this is my update for uh, uh, theta i whenever I picked action a i in uh, uh, state uh, in, at time t right. So, this is fine for theta i corresponding to action a i. So, what about the other thetas? Do you change only theta i or do you change other thetas as well? It turns out that changing only theta i is good enough because theta i will move in the right direction right. So, if you are getting a positive reward theta i will go up, if you are getting a negative reward theta i will go down. But it turns out for completeness sake of the gradient you have to look at the uh, the, the other uh, thetas also right not just theta i. So, what we should be looking at is uh, taking the derivative of a i theta with respect to some theta j right. So, the same same uh, derivation goes through right. So, this is dou by dou theta j of ln e power theta i divided by summation over j e power theta. So, we oh, will make it k right e power theta k. So, that is basically uh, what we have to do. Now, doing this exactly the same uh, as, as here right. So, dou by dou theta j of theta i minus ln summation k equal 1 to m e power theta k. Right. This is equal to 0 minus. So, this will be divided by summation over k. What will be the numerator? The numerator will only have a theta j term, right. So, everything else will go to 0. So, you have e power theta j, this is equal to minus pi of. So, the derivative of 
the action the probability of the action you just now took right that is basically what we are trying to use with respect to the other parameter theta j is actually minus pi of a j theta j right. So, what you should do is for delta theta i this is the expression for delta theta j it will be basically alpha into r minus r bar into minus pi of a j. Remember this is essentially pi of Okay, make sense. This is for actions i, uh, for uh, for theta j for uh, uh, actions corresponding to the ones that were not taken at time t. Right, this is assuming that at at you took action i. So the next thing that we are going to look at is to essentially uh, see what happens when you do continuous actions. Right. So remember, I was telling you when you do continuous actions, you have a mu and a sigma. Right, and then and then uh, 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 you use a Gaussian distribution, right? So in this case, it's a single action, so it's going to be a univariate Gaussian. So that's the expression that you have, right? And then I can, uh, with the suitable choice for my you know alpha and uh, uh, other things, I can basically write it like this, right? So my delta mu will be a minus mu. That's the derivative of this whole thing, plus a few other things. So what are the other things that are there? There will be some sigma squared term somewhere, right? Uh, so I'll I'll be doing a ln of this. So it will be ln of one by root two pi sigma plus ln of e power that, which will just be minus a uh, uh, a minus mu the whole square by two sigma square, right? So I mean you can you can think of what will happen. So then the first term will go away because there's no mu in it. The second term will be minus two into a minus mu, right? Into minus one. Which is derivative of minus two, so the minus and minus will get cancelled. Two and two will go. That will, but there will be a sigma squared somewhere, right? So likewise, I can take the derivative of this with respect to derivative of ln of this with respect to sigma as well, and I basically end up with uh, uh, this expression, right? This sigma sigma will become uh, minus sigma squared when I take the derivative, and and uh, right? all of that. So the way to get this uh, is to basically set the uh, because the sigma squared will be there, right? Even after I finish taking the derivative, so I basically set the alpha to be some alpha mu, which is the step size for the updating the mu parameters, and alpha sigma, which is the step size for updating the sigma parameter. Both I set them to be some alpha times sigma squared, so that I'll get this expression. Likewise, the baseline I just set it to to r bar, right? So which is the average reward obtained so far. So r bar is the same as what we had uh, here, right? So that's that's the uh, that is the same expression that I use for the baseline, right. <coughs> and this gives me the update rule for uh, when I use continuous actions, right. So, so if you remember, uh, we kept saying that we will use a different learning rule, right, different error function for updating the parameters, not, not the uh, TD error that we used earlier. Uh, so, this is basically what we end up with, right. And it turns out that this expression when you are, when you are trying to do the full RL uh, setting, right, uh, this expression will kind of start looking like the TD error and we will see that in a bit, okay.